How's it going everybody? This is Matt from Spark and today we're going to talk about the Javelin Prototype 2. To start, we're going to talk about why the Javelin is getting developed. If we look at the Bandit, this bike was developed to be an electric moped, something that had pedals, was legal to ride, had VINs, um, and was focused on customization and utility. This was something that we wanted people to get and be able to go to work on, get their groceries on, and really replace their car with. The Javelin had two main focuses. The first, how can we develop a frame that can be completely manufactured here at our headquarters in Brantford, Connecticut? Two, we wanted to focus on the riding experience more than the utility of the bike. How can we make something that is just a blast to ride every time you go out? We wanted the Bandit to be our utility vehicle and the Javelin to be our fun sports vehicle. The other thing to keep in mind is the Bandit, like I said before, fulfills the moped category legally. But what does the Javelin fulfill? The Javelin is actually the scooter category. So if we look at vintage Vespas and these older Italian designs and European designs, things have not changed in that category for a while. Yes, we have stand-up scooters that have gone crazy over the past two years, but nothing has really changed in the sit-down scooter category. They all have that kind of generic shape. To fulfill that category, we just need to have a specific seat height, a specific engine size, and a speed limit. The only thing we don't have are pedals. Pedals would then put it back into the moped category. As far as we're concerned, seeing all these high-powered electric bikes just put pedals on them does not make them legal and is actually very misleading to the entire industry. It's now time that people start developing the electric scooter category legally as a step right before people get into motorcycles. That means the Javelin will have VINs and it will have turn signals, brake lights, all that kind of stuff that really should be on all of these high powered bikes. There's no reason for these manufacturers to not be including this stuff. Before we show you a preview of the bike, keep this in mind. This is another prototype. And a lot of people are asking, why do we make a second prototype? Why do we just go from the first one to our, our actual final bikes? Well, if you remember a couple months ago, you may remember that we came out with a video that said we are putting the bike into a secret state because of a few developments. You'll see the main change in the frame design that led us to say, okay, we need to make a completely new frame and test that first before we go ahead with the production bike. There are a few other things that we'll touch on later in the video that we kept secret during this time, but the main thing is rear suspension. Let's start by looking at the handlebars of the bike. On your right hand side, you're going to see two buttons. Now this is really important. One button activates a turbo. This is an overdrive. It will push way more amps into the system for a short period of time. You can't hold this turbo down all the time. And there are waiting periods in between when you can use it. So you got to make sure that you time it right. The other button is very unique. If we look down at the controls, if you switch the toggle to the down position, that lower button is a cruise control function. That's not too exciting. But if we now flip it up into the top mode, you've entered something that we call game mode. Game mode 
will remind you of some of those older Nintendo racing games. So what does that mean? Well, depending on a few parameters, you will have the ability to use the turbo, or you will have the equivalent of what's commonly known as the red shell. Yes, the Javelin has a radio transmitter in it. That allows it to connect to other Javelins. And when you're on a racetrack, you can use your deactivating button to take down other riders out there. Now, it doesn't take them down the entire time, but it provides about a second and a half of throttle cut. So think about it, you're on the track. You can either decide to use your turbo to pass somebody, or you can use your deactivate button and take somebody's power out for a second and a half. This is all leading to something that we are working on in the background, which is a racing league. We want to work with other electric bike manufacturers to begin establishing a racing league around the country. Cars have go-karts all the way up to Formula One. Two-wheel vehicles only have motorcycles or dirt bikes. With the popularity of e-bikes on the rise, we think it's time that a low-speed racing league gets developed. If we look at the controls on your left side, you have your main motorcycle functions. You have your turn signals, you have your high beam, you have your horn, but there is a new lever, and that is a active regen throttle, if you want to call it that. It's not really a throttle, though. If we look at other e-bike companies, the regen function is more like a light switch. It's either on or off. This new lever allows you to gradually add or remove regen. When you ride the Javelin, it's very uncommon to actually use the main hydraulic brakes. Most of the time, you are throttling with this hand and pressing that regen lever to brake. Let's talk more about some of the components that we've used on the bike. So, working our way down the bike is the controller. So the controller we have used is completely open source, um, and we're going to keep it open source. You can actually connect to it using Bluetooth or a computer app. You can get into the programming and dial everything. So if you'd like to prioritize efficiency, you can do that. If you want to prioritize just high speed all the time, you can do that too. There's also the ability to engage something called flux weakening, which is a little techy, but it would give you a little bit higher top speed at the compromise of battery life. You can even adjust the throttle um, the way that throttle feels on the output. So if you want it to be really torquey right off the bat, you can do that. Or if you want it to be a slower ramp up, you can adjust that too. So continuing to push backwards is the battery. So it is a fully removable battery. Not only does that lighten the bike up, so if you want to bring it inside or put it into a vehicle, it's a lot easier. But more importantly, um, a lot of people will keep the bike in their garage or something, and they just want to take the battery inside to charge it. If you fold the seat to the side, the battery now slides out and you can bring it in. That battery powers a motor in the back um, that is 3000 watts. So by standard, it will be a 72 volt, 3000 watt system. And it's running a 26 inch wheel. This combination is really efficient. Um, it provides good torque, really good high top speed, and just amazing range. What's interesting is we have specified a controller that is way over what this bike actually needs. Um, and we have decided to do a hub motor instead of a mid-drive for a very specific reason. This is not a dirt bike. You're not taking this off jumps. So prioritizing a good balance from the front to rear wheel is not as important. So we can do a rear motor and not worry about taking a jump and having the rear wheel dip down. But more importantly, these hub drives have become very reliable and are very easy to replace. What does that mean? If something happens with the motor, changing it out is as easy as changing a tire. You just undo the two axle nuts, pop it off, go to the controller, unplug it, and pop it in a new one. Well, there's an interesting side effect to that. Because we used a very overpowered controller for what this thing needs, theoretically, you could put on a different motor. So we've tried to make this bike not only easy to repair, but easy to upgrade and adjust down the road. Some other interesting uh, features on the bike 
uh, would be the fact that we actually utilized spools on the rear uh, swing arm. And that allows you to use a nice motorcycle stand so you can pop it up um, and work on the bike and not have to worry about that thing falling over on you or test the motor or do whatever you need to do. As far as design goes with the Javelin, the bike you see is the second prototype. But what you should know is we have already finished working on the third design. The third design will no longer be a prototype bike. Instead, what we would call it is a pre-production. Well, this gets into the timeline of the launch. Our process will be finish this second prototype in street test, build three pre-production bikes, and send them around the country. We're gonna get into how we're gonna do that, but just get ready. Um, you're gonna start seeing these bikes around the country and people are gonna be riding them that you know, and you'll be able to even probably test ride um, these pre-production bikes depending on where you live in the country. Those pre-production bikes will run for about three months throughout the entire winter. And we will take all that information to refine and then we will launch the bike in the spring of next year. One thing that um, some people have noticed about Spark is we almost never show renders. We never show graphics of like what the bike is gonna look like um, because inevitably it never comes out um, the same way in real life. Anytime we show you anything on the Javelin, just realize that it is a real product. It's something that has really been riding on the road and it's not just something that's been stuck in a computer. Um, we think that's important because, you know, we've seen a lot of other companies launching bikes that they make a fancy graphic up and uh, it's never been refined, it's never even been tested on the road and then they go to launch it and then they have problems and that causes that bike to get a year or two of delays before it comes out. The way we do this, we can be very confident. So, that's the Javelin. Um, you're going to start seeing more information on Prototype 2. Uh, we'll be showing this thing on the road quite a bit more. And we really want to hear what you guys think about it, what we can do to improve this design, what parts do you really like, what do you not like. The more information we can get from you, um, the better, and the better the product is going to turn out. That's it for now. Uh, hope you guys liked what you saw. And uh, get ready for a lot more videos coming out on this bike in the next week or so.